Michael's Texans Bill O'Brien on the hot seat not so fast. A quick glance at items of interest as the NFL regular season comes to a close in Week 17. Bill O'Brien. As Black Monday looms, one of the most intriguing subplots comes from Houston, where O'Brien finally has a star quarterback in rehabbing Deshaun Watson. On one level, there's no way O'Brien should be on the hot seat as the Texans, 4-11, close the season at Indianapolis, where Chuck Pagano is definitely on the hot seat. Houston had the hottest offense in the NFL before Watson suffered a torn ACL. Without the season-ending injuries to Watson, J.J. Watt and Whitney Merciless, the Texans would have probably claimed a third consecutive division title. Sure, good coaches make their hay by adjusting to adversity. It's just that Houston had it worse than most. So why would O'Brien, who would likely be snapped up ASAP if he hits the market in a timely manner, even be considered to possibly be on the hot seat? Reportedly, his relationship with GM Rick Smith is toxic. Stay tuned. Keenan Allen. The NFL's comeback player of the year could very well be the big play receiver who has re-established himself as Philip Rivers' go-to man after injuries ruined his past two seasons. As the Chargers host the Raiders and cling to playoff hopes, Allen, 93 catches, 1,260 yards, leads the NFL with 34 receptions on third down, when he's averaged 15.1 yards on the clutch money downs. Last year, Allen suffered a torn ACL in Week 1. Two years ago, Allen's season was cut short by a lacerated kidney. Earlier this year, he became the first player in NFL history, yes, that includes the eras of Jerry Rice, Randy Moss and Raymond Barry, too, to post at least 10 catches, 100 yards and a TD for three consecutive games. Now it is time to rank the Cal's product among the best receivers in the league team needs, the holes non-playoff squads must address Week 17 picks, our NFL experts pick the game's five matchups to watch, can Cam Newton knock Falcons out? Devon to Freeman vs Luke Coochley. The Falcons could sure use their star running back to finish strong during their virtual playoff game against Carolina, which brings a top-notch defense anchored by the linebacker who leads the team with 115 tackles. In last weekend's loss at New Orleans, Freeman fumbled on the goal line in the third quarter, then followed that turnover by opening the fourth quarter by getting stuffed on fourth and goal from the one. Sure, Freeman needs the blocking and Matt Ryan triggers a spray it around passing attack bolstered by the presence of Julio Jones. But that balance needs not to squander goal line opportunities. Especially with the season for the defending NFC champs hanging in the balance. Paxton Lynch and Patrick Mahomes. Maybe this quarterback matchup at Arrowhead Stadium is a preview of many more to come. Maybe not. Mahomes will make his starting debut for the Chiefs while Alex Smith, the NFL's top-rated passer, is put in preservation mode with the A West crown locked up. It will be a chance for Andy Reid to assess how Mahomes is progressing after his hot preseason had some wondering whether he'd take Smith's job as a rookie. He's clearly the quarterback of the future, whenever that day arrives. Lynch, on the other hand, is still a big question mark in his second season with the Broncos, set back by injuries and a slow learning curve. Football boss John Elway sees the QB position as a top off-season priority, which is hardly a ringing endorsement for the developmental QB in the fold. Shaq Will Griffin. All-pro cornerback Richard Sherman took the third-round pick under his wing which undoubtedly has its benefits in the football IQ department. And Griffin has been solid for a Seahawks secondary surely missing Sherman and Cam Chancellor. The fresh test, though, will likely include some matchups against Wiley veteran Larry Fitzgerald in the must-win game against Arizona, which has won three of its past four games at Seattle. With the Central Florida product limited in practice this week due to a hamstring injury, the target on his back may be even bigger. There's also another big game that Griffin is connected to this weekend. His identical twin, Shackham, is a linebacker at Central Florida, which puts its undefeated record on the line against Auburn in the Peach Bowl on New Year's Day. Bengals at Ravens. It's simple enough for Baltimore, win, and the Ravens, 9-6, 
are in the playoffs. Yet division games can always provide a twist, regardless of the records. Cincinnati, 6-9, spoiled Detroit's bid for a postseason berth last weekend by upsetting the Lions. Now the Bengals can play spoiler again in what might be Marvin Lewis' last game as head coach. In Baltimore of all places, where he once coordinated an amazing defense that provided the backbone to a Super Bowl crown. Adding to anxiety, Andy Dalton, supported by the prolific A.J. Green, is playing much better than in Week 1, when Baltimore tagged him for five sacks and five turnovers, four INTs, one fumble, in a shutout loss. The Titans would be in as the AFC's second wild card. To keep that spot, Tennessee, 8-7, merely needs to defeat a South champ Jacksonville. The Jaguars, 10-5, could be running low on incentive, given that New England and Pittsburgh have already locked up the first-round buys. Then again, the Jags might extract some motivation from the chance to knock a division rival from the playoffs and the Titans are pressed to get it done without the services of their top running back, DeMarco Murray, who suffered a sprained knee during last weekend's loss at the Rams. If Tennessee loses, its hopes would hinge on losses by both Buffalo, at Miami, and the Chargers, home versus Raiders. In other words, win or else. After throwing a career-high 673 passes and setting an NFL record with 471 completions in 2016, Drew Brees heads into Tampa seeking to clinch the NFC South crown while poised to tally his second fewest passing attempts in a season during his Saints tenure. It's striking to note that when he threw just 514 times in 2009, he was complemented by a strong rushing attack, as is the case now, and it was key to a Super Bowl ticket. In any event, the former Purdue Boilermaker is as efficient as ever. He's completed 71.9% of his 506 passes. If he maintains that clip, he'll break the NFL record for completion percentage, 71.59%, said just last year by Sam Bradford. Todd Gurley may not close the regular season with a rushing title, but there are bigger goals in sight as Rams coach Sean McVay has already declared that with the NFC West crown seized, He'll rest his star running back for Sunday's game against the 49ers. Gurley, 1,305 yards, leads Chiefs rookie Kareem Hunt by 13 yards and Steelers stud Le'Veon Bell by 14 yards in the running for the rushing title. Regardless, none of this diminishes Gurley's case as the NFL's MVP. He leads the league with 19 TDs and 2,093 yards from scrimmage. And last weekend at Tennessee, he became just the third player in NFL history, and first since fellow Georgia Bulldog Herschel Walker in 1986, to post a game with 100 rushing yards and 150 receiving yards. Photos, Best NFL Celebrations